Hello guys, in this video I want to share with you what I've learned over a few months of using Cursor as my primary IDE instead of PHP Storm. So I will share separate tips with a lot of practical examples of prompts. And at the end of this video, I'll also share four VS Code or Cursor extensions to help with Laravel and PHP projects. Disclaimer, whatever I say today may be obsolete in a few months. With Cursor and AI editors, everything moves so fast. And also quick side note, this video is a bit longer than usual on this channel and you will see the outfit and the lighting change a few times. So this is an example when I shoot video in separate pieces over a few days. Now, what have I learned while using Cursor with Laravel? Let's dive into my tips. Let's start with the model choice. Pretty recently they changed the model choice to auto. So they automatically choose the model for you. But I've noticed and also people complain that it's unpredictable then. Although they recommend it, look at the tweets. Fabian is comparing auto mode with Russian relate with your code base. Gabe is complaining that he got used to Gemini 2.5 Pro and for some reason that Otto was using a different model with worse results. And finally, a meme from Twitter instead of going with Otto, just read Cursor's Guide. And yes, that thing exists. In the docs, you have selecting models with pretty extensive list of models and even the chart below here when to choose which. But the point is that models are different for different purpose and behavior. That is kind of a separate topic for a separate longer video, but do not leave it as auto because the results may be unpredictable. Turn off auto and as you can see, by default it is choosing Claude 3.5. I personally prefer to work with Gemini 2.5 Pro. Before that appeared in cursor, I used Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, and both are so-called thinking models, and both are pretty good. You may read more about models and their choices, but my main thing is do not leave it to auto. And I will choose Gemini for next examples. The next tip, you should create your fundamentals of the project outside of cursor and outside of agent. So open the project in cursor only when you have Laravel installed and all the fundamentals that you need, like filament, for example, roles permissions package, so all the architectural decisions with packages specifically. Because if you try to do that in cursor, then two things may happen. First, you use AI credit, which may be done in terminal for free. And also you don't have any guarantees that cursor, whatever model you use, has the latest version of the documentation and terminal commands, or even knows that that version exists. If you do something like this, see what happens. It checks for the ability to create Laravel 12 project and knows that Laravel 12 is currently in development. So even after searching the web, Gemini model isn't guaranteed that Laravel 12 exists or this command is also not the thing that I expected. I was expecting Laravel new using the starter kit. So yeah, cursor is not good at installing fundamentals. Another example, even if you do have Laravel installed, for example, you want to install filament and you offload that to the agent, to Gemini, look at the artisan command. Composer require filament 3.2. If you look at the documentation of filament, the command is 3.3. For some packages, it may be a minor difference, but basically do not trust cursor agent with any versions of any packages. There are ways how you can kind of force cursor to use Laravel 12 and other versions, and I will show you that later in this video. But my point is do not start the project with cursor agent. The next tip will be about prompting, writing prompt. This prompt is pretty short. People who complain that AI editor or LLM doesn't perform well usually don't provide specific enough prompts. So this prompt is pretty vague. LLM would have a lot of questions like, is Laravel installed here? Is Spotty permission package installed? What should be the design for that tailwind or bootstrap? Where should I put the CRUD menu items and so on. So you need to describe the prompt in the same way as you would delegate that task to a junior colleague or any teammate. And the more details you miss, the more unpredictable results you would get. So let's try to launch that and see what happens. In this case, in my project, I have Laravel installed, Laravel Breeze installed and Spotty permission installed and configured. And after some thinking, look at where it would start. And in this case, I actually got lucky. In my previous attempt, it tried to install Spotty permission or configure Spotty permission or do vendor publish or rerun migrations. So something that I had already done. And even if the outcome is correct, you may speed it up because that first part, it is saying that I need to understand if the package is already installed. 
you can tell it that it's already installed, then you will get the result quicker and probably more accurately. A better prompt would be something like this. Specify Laravel project version that is already installed and configured. Also create two CRUDs, place them in the breeze navigation. What should be inside of that CRUD and for design use Tailwind. So if we run this version now, let's see what happens. Again, some thinking and the result is almost the same. Generating the resource, but the thought process starts with controllers and requests right away, instead of thinking whether package is installed or configured. The next tip is to use cursor rules, global and per project or individual rules. So here's an example. In this case, I haven't provided any rules to cursor. And if I ask to generate a gate for permissions, I stopped the command and haven't finished that, but look what it's doing. It is trying to find auth service provider and it doesn't exist in Laravel 12 anymore. There's only app service provider. And I have a separate video about cursor rules for Laravel 11 plus Skeleton and I will link that in the description below. But basically I add a set of rule enforcing that Laravel 11 structure among other things. So in the cursor settings there are rules. And since I work mostly with Laravel projects, I provide those as user rules globally for all the chats with agent. Among those instructions, we have this Laravel 11 Skeleton structure service providers, event listeners, and other things that was changed since Laravel 11. So you can put that as global rules or generate new rule in your project. For example, you may have rules for Laravel, for filament, for whatever else, for front end, and include them only in specific project or only in specific chat with AI agent. But now I've closed the setting window and I will repeat the same prompt with those project rules activated. And as you can see, it immediately goes to app service provider. And if we go up the thinking process, thought for two seconds, it was trying to define the gate and auth service provider, but now I'm not sure how clearly you can see that blurred text, but since Laravel 11 doesn't have a separate auth service provider. So it is listening to my rules. And generally with every project, I add something to those global cursor rules when I encounter that something is generated not the way I want it. The next tip is to use context here. If you don't provide any context, then LLM would try to figure out what files to work with or what is involved, and it would be at least slower or more inaccurate. So it may miss the files that you already have. It's similar to my previous point, and let's try an example. So I'm using Laravel Breeze here, and I'm trying to ask to add navigation item, but I don't specify that it's Breeze, and I don't specify the file for navigation. Let's see what Gemini will generate for us. Okay, it's trying to find the file. It did find the navigation blade correctly. And yeah, if we review the changes, navigation blade worked well in this case. But again, look at the thinking process. I'll start by exploring the views directory to locate the navigation file and found the navigation blade. But what if we put that as context? Let's try to repeat the same thing, but as context, let's add navigation blade. And now let's see what happens. And it immediately adds something to the navigation blade without searching through all the folder. So the result in this case is the same, but it was performed much quicker because it immediately went to specific file to add that navigation link. And if we see the thinking process, it immediately involves navigation blade without searching the full folder for blade views. The next tip is do not give too large tasks because it tends to do something not exactly in the way you want in some middle subtask of the big task. And then it is hard to course correct or get it back on track or stop and this way you may lose a lot of AI credits as well. So here's an example and here's what you should do. So I'm asking it to create two CRUDs with some requirements with Tailwind CSS. So those CRUDs would be controllers, views, also Tailwind configuration. And also I ask it to write past tests, which is kind of a separate subtasks. So maybe we should slice that into separate tasks instead of one. Or alternatively, at the end of the prompt, ask it to first provide the plan of action and then you review and then prompt it in a dialogue way to proceed. So let's see what it generates. Okay, so the plan is pretty detailed. Let's scroll up nine points with more sub details. And let's see, verify package setup. And here you can prompt it to proceed with step with course correcting something that you see is incorrect. For example, proceed with step one, but permission migrations have been run and also create new user with this permission. So I choose that option. 
let's proceed so we have a new seeder it would generate the seeder and fill it in with the data so it will do some work and the main point for myself is what happens after it finishes the first step let's see okay so it has generated the seeder we can run db seed we can do that elsewhere or prompt it to execute that but see what happens we can move on to step two generating controllers when you are ready so basically you can course correct in the background run the seed or change something or accept or make other changes and then proceed to step two and three and so on you may skip steps you may tell it to rearrange something and this is exactly how you would write the code yourself right after each sub functionality you would test review and see what changed and what way to proceed so this is exactly how you would interact with LLM with cursor for best results, in my opinion. So those people who are vibe coding the whole project in one prompt or trying to come up with various tools and configurations to reach one shot result, I think the logic is incorrect. They may succeed sometimes, but you reach much better results when you control the process and have the plan in action, which you can refer to by prompting in a dialogue way. And also there are separate tools like Taskmaster and others who would save the plan somewhere like requirements documentation and other files that LLM would refer to for the rest of this session. And also you can even generate that plan outside of Curse I see people doing that with Claude, desktop or web, describing their feature in their own words and asking Claude to transform that into so-called PRD, project requirement document, if I remember correctly, which would be a better fit to copy paste into Cursor to execute the plan. The next tip is to tell Cursor to automatically check its own work. So at the end of the prompt, you may ask it to run tests, for example, or write tests specifically for the feature you're asking for, or for example, rerun migrations and see that still works. And the main part and fix any errors, which would automatically be the evaluation and cursor would actually try to fix if something goes wrong. So let's see what happens with this prompt. It's a very simple prompt, kind of artificial example, but I want to look at the process. So it's generating something. So the text is on the dashboard and now past test. Make test past probably will not work because there's no past anymore. Oh, actually there is past test, okay. And now it's prompting me to run this and let's see what happens. We run, it all passes and we're good now what is inside of that test let's see it's doing a search c text so yeah exactly as expected so it has performed the tasks and tested that the task actually works in my experience however i did have a case where it generated the test but then visually i encountered an error so still make sure to double check and triple check everything but this gets you closer to the correct results and at least to avoid unnecessary silly bugs and you can combine this tip with a previous tip about rules so you can generate separate rules to for example generate and run tests so add new rule for example past and it would generate a file pass.mdc, which would be manual to execute. So you would choose when to execute it, not on every prompt. For example, you can do this, write pass test for this feature, for whatever feature you're running, you save it here. And then in the prompt, you may reference that rule. As you can see, cursor rules here, and you may choose past MDC or type it in manually, and then it will perform the same thing. That's a general kind of tip usage of rules for specific AI agent chats. If you want to add some rule at the end or in the beginning of your prompt. Another tip would be about external tool called Context 7, which I found pretty recently, and it helps you to get the latest documentation of whatever tool you're using. So this kind of comes back to previous tip about you need to enforce Laravel 11 skeleton, for example, or Laravel 12 syntax. So Context 7 can help you with that because it collects the documentations for a lot of libraries, including Laravel. And as you can see, update for Laravel docs is two days ago. And how it works when you reference Context 7 in your prompt, and I will show you that in a second. It doesn't download Laravel docs for you, but it specifically prompts for specific sections of the documentation so it has the documentation sliced on their servers so it doesn't bring the full context of huge documentation it brings only what you need with pretty quick results how to install it is in the github documentation in the cursor all you need to do is add mcpjson with this 
I've done it already in my cursor. So you have MCP servers, which is a separate long topic for MCP. Let me know if you want me to shoot a separate video about MCP, but this would be kind of outside of Laravel. So it's not really a fit for this channel in my opinion. But anyway, for contact seven, you just add that contact seven into MCP. And you can see already I'm using another MCP for task master, which I mentioned previously for task planning. And then yeah, in your prompts, for example, this is the prompt. I told you to not install packages in cursor, but as an experiment, you have any prompt and you add use contact seven at the end. That's all you need to do. And let's see the thinking process. We execute and then contact seven will probably call. Yeah, it does do that called MCP tool to resolve the library, which will be filament. And then it will get the docs for filament with the correct version of 3.3 instead of having 3.2 if you just ask it to install filament. So the process is this resolve library ID by filament. So it searches for documentation for filament specifically. And then each library has stuff like trust score, for example, and then filament PHP filament is found with trust score much bigger. And as you can see, code snippets are present here separately. And then when it finds the library, it finds the docs for that library and topic. So then it returns the snippet result with snippet title and description. And in that description, this is probably if I understand correctly is added then to LLM back for the prompt, and then you get this result. So use contact seven if your prompt is required to have some latest docs for latest syntax. That said, be careful while using contact seven for a few weeks. I noticed that sometimes it doesn't work. Pretty randomly, it doesn't take contact seven sometimes. So double check the thinking prompt if it was actually successfully retrieving the docs. And yeah, even in the prompt, you may actually reference the docs. So if we stop and in the context, you can have docs, but those docs are internally from cursor. So if you search for Laravel, yep, it is here. But if we hover over that, we see Laravel docs 10.x. So internally cursor is trained on Laravel 10 documentation. So you either need to provide the docs manually here in another form of Git, for example, or cursor rules, or just use contact seven. It's much more convenient. And then the final thing in this video, as I promised in the very beginning, extensions for cursor or for VS code. This was a tutorial, a free article on Laravel daily com written by my colleague Modestas. And I will just mention those extensions and I will link that article in the description below. So you may read with screenshots in full, but basically for cursor, you use VS code extensions and recently Laravel team released the official Laravel extension for VS code. So that's one recommendation. The second recommendation is PHP IntelliFence. Then the third extension is Laravel pinned for code styling and also PHP by DevSense. And again, what each extension does, you may read in the article and I will link that in the description below. If you have any other extensions to recommend, then shoot them in the comments below. And yeah, pretty long video. I didn't expect that to be that long. Sorry, but did you enjoy it? What other tips do you have that I may missed with cursor? And probably this will be a little bit obsolete more and more with months because cursor will evolve. So I'll probably reshoot this or similar video every few months or so with new set of tips. So subscribe to the channel to not miss that video or videos about other AI tools with Laravel and see you guys in other videos.